Hey guys, CompSciGirl523 here, and we're back today with our second tutorial. So first, quick update about the SI files. I am still working on it. I was just recently working on more so with the textures, so that's not really something I would live stream. Uh, once I get all the textures and everything sorted out and I start actually programming, is probably the next time I will live stream uh, any work I'm doing on it. Uh, but I will keep you guys updated. Um, I guess that's all for updates. Now back to this. So... Um, there was a lot of good suggestions for various different tutorials that you wanted me to do. I have written them all down, and I decided for this second tutorial, since we started the first one with just like overview of map making, we'd start with some of the basic commands that you use to sort of bring your world to life in the sense that it's you interacting with the player. So I'm going to talk about test for, tell raw and title commands. So let's get started. So on my screen right now you see I have a notepad document. This is how I'm going to like show you guys the commands and I'll show you some examples of how they're used actually in Minecraft. So the first one we will go over is test for. So test for can be used on players, entities, blocks, and various different structures you build in Minecraft. Um, so I'm going to go over each one of those. So for a player or an entity, an entity is defined as, uh, could be a mob, could be a item frame is considered an entity, and an armor stand is considered an entity. Um, mine carts can be considered entities, stuff like that. Uh, so when you want to interact with those and have to test for those, you use test for with a selector. Uh, you can identify their type if you want, if you're looking for a specific em entity, you can, if they have a specific custom name. Keep in mind the custom name has to be just one word, just as like player names are usually one word, uh, they can't have, meaning they can't have any spaces. Uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates, and it's radius from those coordinates that you're willing to have it trigger off and also NBT tags. So I'll go over each of these individually. Uh, so for selectors, you have at P, at E, at A, at R, and at S. At S is a new one they're adding in 1.12. Uh, this is basically to indicate whoever is running the command, because when you use an execute command, you're running it from the player versus running it from like the actual command blocks. Um, at P means you want the closest player to that command block or whatever is being triggered. Um, again, if you're using X, Y, and Z, it's the closest player to those coordinates. At E is entity. This does include players, but this also can include the mobs, the armor stands, item frames, etc. At A is all, meaning entity, player, doesn't matter. At R is for random. That's more so used for, like... For example, if you have something that you want to target a random player, you would use that. Uh, type here, when you use type, you're going to use this format. So, for example, have Minecraft Pig, Minecraft Villager, etc., etc. And as I said before, if you use name, uh, it, has to, it can be a player name or it can be a custom name that you named an entity, but it cannot have spaces. So I made a note there. No spaces at all. Uh, this is because you do not use quotes around it, therefore you cannot have spaces. And if you try to use quotes around it, it won't read it. So that's for players and entities. Blocks and structures are a little bit different. Use a slightly different form of test for. I use test for block and test for blocks. So test for block is usually used if you're looking for a singular block or if you're looking for items inside of another block. So, for example, if you're looking for a player to put an item in a hopper to trigger something, this is what you would use. So, in that case, test for block, you would have its X, Y, and Z coordinate. You would have its name, so it would be Minecraft Hopper, Minecraft Chest, whatever it is. Its data value, and again, NBT tags. These NBT tags, they're very similar for both um, this test for and this test for. I'm going to go over those together in this section here. Um, and then for a test for blocks, this is when you want to do a structured setup. So if you have like a giant structure you built, uh, not too big because there's issues with uh, memory management, but if you built a decent sized structure and you want the person to have an exact copy of that, 
uh, they say that's a puzzle, they have to build something. Uh, you take the X, Y, and Z of the one of the corners, and then the X, Y, and Z of the other corner, and then you want the X, Y, and Z of the lower northwest corner of the area you are trying to match. So I'll show you an example uh, in Minecraft. Um, then we'll go to NBT tags. So these are kind of, you don't necessarily need to have these, but they kind of help refine exactly what you want to be looking for when you're testing for different things. So in the case where it's a player, you if you want to search your inventory, this would be the searching the inventory. If it's a block, then you're having item instead of inventory. That's why I have item slash inventory. It's one of these two words here. Um, there's various ways you can search. For example, if you want to search just for a named item, like an item that's named something special, you can use the tag, display, and the name. Uh, if you want to look specifically for an item by its data val like data name, uh, then you would use the ID Minecraft item name. You can use this in combination with each other. You could also do these in multiples. So this is basically an array in the code, and you separate these by putting them in these curly brackets, and you have the comma. These are also some other ones. Uh, you could have slot numbers. So for example, I have like helmet, chest place, leggings, and boots listed here. If you want to test to make sure a player has a certain piece of armor on before they can go through something, then you can do that. Count, you can check how much of an item someone's carrying. So they have at least this amount of an item. They can continue to do something. Keep in mind, count only works in if they're, all the items are in a stack. If they're spread out in the inventory, it does not count them across spaces. Uh, damage is used when using like different data types. For example, when wool, if you want a different colored wool you're testing for, you actually have to use damage to identify that. Um, also, for you can do that to test armor damage and such. And then item rotation is specifically for item frames is so you can test which way the item is pointing in the item frame. So now that I've kind of gone briefly over all this, <laughs> um, I will now show you some sample circuits in Minecraft. All right, this is my little test for area. So first I'm going to show you how I do the doors. So as you know, in my maps I usually have you find keys or have you lock pick a door. And the reason that you are able to go through doors with these items is because I have commands set up in the floor. And I will show you. So uh, I have a couple different items here. So I know for a fact this will let me in the door. So if you see I jump over. I go through the door. Now here's the command blocks I have running. So usually you'd only have one set of these, but I'm just going to show you an example for two of them. So go over this example first. So if I go here. So right now this is testing for a player at this these coordinates with a radius of two. Coordinates I used were, was the wool block right there. Uh, and then I'm testing for an item in my inventory. I'm testing for an item that has that is a name tag that is specifically named key. So, for example, if I jump back through here, grab it, I'll just grab everything in here. If I didn't have this, if I just had an item named key in my inventory, doesn't matter because I have it set as name tag, it will not let me through. If I have a, just a name tag in my inventory, it still won't let me through because it's not named key. I need that to get through. Now you see I'm using a repeater block. You could also do this uh, since I have it always active no matter what it will always work. You can do it so that you can disable doors as well. For example if you need to like have it so that a player even though they have a key something's blocking the door. Uh, you could set this to just needs redstone and you can replace a redstone signal behind the command block. Use just a redstone block will work. They like, turn it on and off type of thing. For now I'll leave it like that. Now this one I'm um, showing you can test for more than one thing in the inventory, so I'm going to test for the key and for the torch. As you see right now, I don't have the torch, so that one's not lighting up. Only that one's lighting up. If I grab the torch, now both of them light up because I have the torch in my inventory. So that's how the doors work. Uh, now over here, we have a armor stand. So... 
in here I have a command that's testing for a couple of things with this armor stand. So instead of testing specifically for an armor stand, I'm testing for something named display. This armor stand is named display. Uh, and for armor stands, you can test for armor items. So it's testing for a golden helmet, and it's also testing for a leather chest plate that has a specific color. The color you can um, look online for the different colors. Uh, you have to convert the color that's displayed when you have the item in your inventory versus the color that you need to put in here. There's different converters online you can use. Um, also, I'm testing for a hand, hand item that is a torch. So if I were to put the helmet on, you see this doesn't light up yet because it still doesn't have the torch. If I put the torch, it now lights up. If I were to take the helmet off, it would turn off. So that's kind of how you can work with entities such as armor stands for various different things. I'm just going to put these back in here. All right, so next we're going to do test for blocks. So this is when you have like structures that you want to test against each other. So for example, here I have just this pillar of wool. If I want to test for that exact pattern right here, I use this command. Right now I have it as test for blocks. I have the coordinates of this pillar. I have the lower coordinate and the upper coordinate. And I also have the lower coordinates for where I'm building. So the lowest one's here. Now if I do it wrong, nothing should happen. Whoops. Displace the block. Nothing happens. However, if I actually do this, ta-da, light turns on. So that's how you can use test for blocks. You can do this to do slightly bigger structures, but not too much bigger. You don't want to do, I would say, anything beyond... 3x3, three three, possibly, because the problem is it's a lot of memory to be loading and testing at the same time, and you do not want to lag out somebody's computer, or uh, there are times where it actually will not be able to read the area despite the fact they are identical because of how much memory it's using. So just keep that in mind when you're using tests for blocks. You might need to do them in layers and stuff like that. Alrighty. So... On to our last test for. This is for testing for blocks and items. Also, going to explain this circuit up here because uh, this circuit is most commonly used with tests for block when you're looking for items. So, over here, I don't have the command in there yet. That's because I had multiple commands that I wanted to show. So, the first one I'm going to show is this one. So, pardon me while I keep switching between screens. So, right now I'm testing for a Minecraft hopper with a NBT tag 3 and items that is a written book inside the hopper. So right now there's nothing in the hopper and I have a writable book but I need a written book. So I have one right here, written book, it just says this is also a book. <laughs> so if I put that in there and I turn this to, oops, repeat, always active, it turns on, it senses that the hopper is there. The reason I have it at as a three is because this hopper is facing in this direction. Now, if I were to change that number to anything but three, so if I change it to two, it turns off. The reason being, I'll give you the thing, the data value of three, but expected, can I see the rest of the output? Yep, expected two. So you expected, they expected to find a hopper facing in the two direction. Reality is facing in the three direction. Uh, if you are unsure how a hopper is being placed down and you don't really care how the hopper was placed down, you can just use negative one and you see it turns back on. It'll take it any data value. Now if I take this, my next command want to test for a block that has a written book with the name testing. Now the reason I'm going to do this one is because there's something slightly different you need to do with this. So, see the book name testing? I put it in there. It does not light up. The reason it does not light up is because this is not named on an anvil and it's not an item that is named through a command that is not writing a book. So when it comes to books, you need to actually go to a hopper, or not hopper, an anvil, and just put a space, and then go back, get rid of the space, and now it's named testing. Oops. It just likes to read it. If it's italicized, it'll definitely read it. Keep that in mind. So you see that reads testing, it knows it's in there now. Uh, just keep that in mind. Let's see, we have this one here. Break that. 
I can show you with a normal item. If you need, oops, click too fast. Put a diamond sword in here. And I want to name it awesome according to my code. See how it has the italicized name. And now it reads that it's in there. Uh, usually that works fine if you're using like a give command, that's fine. It just particularly for books, it does not make the name italicized and therefore it does not read it. And yeah, so then let's see what else I got. Oh, wool. All right, so wool, like I mentioned, you need to use damage to identify which color wool you want. So I'm gonna put that there. Oops, Jane, repeat. Always active. Now I want wool damage too. So this is a good time to mention that there's a way to see these MBT tags inside your Minecraft world. You have to turn on tooltips which is F3 plus H. So you press F3 and H together, it turns on these tooltips. You see when I hover over things, I can see uh, the item's number as well as its data value. So wool with a data value of 2 is magenta wool. So I'll grab magenta wool, and if I throw magenta wool in there, the light lights up. If you want to just look for wool in general, you would just have to put regular Minecraft wool, as you can see I have right here. So that's basically some of the basics for test 4. Uh, oh, one last thing. So this, this is what is called, what I call an inverter. Basically, you can test if something was removed. So, for example, if you want a player to find something, and you want something to trigger once they find it, and you don't want it to be that the item is in their inventory, you just want it to be that it was removed from an object, uh, you can put a command in here. So let me, uh, let's see, what do I want to use? I'll just use the magenta wool one again. So let's say there's a piece of magenta wool that was in a hopper and you wanted the player to remove it before something triggered. Uh, chain repeat, always active. So you see it turns off this redstone torch because power is being supplied to it. Um, and this is just going to be a say command. So when I remove this, it says hi in chat. That's because it detects that now this no longer matches the value that you were asking for. So this is a good way to, um, I use this circuit usually when I am testing to see if all monsters were defeated. You can do a test for entity with this type of specific name and once all those entities disappear this light turns back on and triggers off the next set of commands. So that's pretty much the basics of test for. If there's anything you didn't understand or want to know more about let me know in the comments. Uh, and now let's go on to Telraw. All right, as I scroll down here on my little document. So next we have Telraw. Telraw is how you can talk to your player, basically, and have characters interact with your player. The reason I use Telraw over Say is because you could actually um, have, for example, you see, like, you could have a character name, and you could have, um, you don't have the little at symbol in front when you have the Say. So... Um, these are the basic ones you use for Telra. I'll go over each of these briefly. So the basic format for a Telra is slash Telra, selector, which is the same selectors as above, used for a uh, test block. I uh, will show those again. Same thing. And then you want this. This is where the text would go. Now there's different things you can have in the text, and that's where I go into here. So if you, for example, just want to have a character with some text right after it, nothing else triggering. It looks something like this. Uh, you would have two sets of text, and you can change the different colors of the text. Uh, like here I have, I just put color, because it can be any color you choose from the list that Minecraft gives you. Um, there's a list online of the different colors. It's the same colors you can use inside books. Um, then here I usually just standard white text, but you can again put any color you want. If you want something to happen, because they clicked on something inside the text that you're typing, then you have to have something like this. You have to have a click event. So after you do text and the color and whatever, you would have a click event. And this is the format for a click event. So here, just be the click event. Make sure you put it in quotes because they use strict JSON. Um, you have, then again, you have action, run command, value, and then this is where you put the command. Usually I have it as a set block. I'll show you the circuit that I actually use when triggering off different things. Um, if you want to detect a player and put a player's name in there, you're going to have to use this special uh, piece of code here. It's a selector. You have to write it slightly different. You can't just put at P. You need to let them know this is a selector. Otherwise, it will actually write at P. 
instead of the person's name. Uh, in general, if you just want to do a click event, this is a general click event. And yeah, so now I'm going to show you an example. Let me head back to Minecraft. All right, now for the Minecraft demonstration. All right, so now we're in Minecraft. So here I have the circuit set up. So uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use test for like I did previously. So I'm going to test for a player standing at a certain location. And based upon that, I'm going to trigger off different pieces of text. So if I put this here, this wants me to walk over here. So I have Filbert saying, hello, comp sci girl. I say, hi, Filbert, what's up? You just stand on the purple square. So now it's triggered off all these, and it's actually set a block over here. So once we go to the purple squares, I go to the purple squares, now teleport to green. If I click here, I teleport to green. How this is actually working is I have my test four. This is a set block, so once this test four has found the player, I have it set a block over here to glass or air or whatever block that is non-redstone. Um, this will stop this from testing so you don't end up triggering something more than once. And then I trigger the text. The text then would trigger, this was a set with the, the text with its set block. Again, here, text with a set block. And then here I just have another set block after this text trigger. This is without a click. So that it would just let me walk over to the purple blocks. Again, it's the test for using a different coordinates. Same thing. And this, instead of using a set block, I had a teleport. So I can show you the actual code. So right here is the code I was using. So here you see instead of running a set block command, I just run a teleport command. All right, now we go down to title. So now moving on to title. So title, uh, there is a very simple command to use. Uh, again, you use a selector. I'm just using at p for the sake of of demonstration, also since I'm the only one in this world right now, um, just using FP will always go to me. Uh, you want to, if you want, you first want to set the time frame for how long your title will last. Uh, you set a fade in, a display time, and a fade out. These are in ticks, so keep that in mind. Um, so if you want, for example, one second is approximately 20 ticks, you would put 20 here and 20 here, and display for two uh, seconds would be 40 there. Um, you could also say where you want your, then after you do that, you have to say where you want your title to display. So if you want to display like a normal title, like the big title on the screen, you'd put title and then your text. If you want it as a subtitle to that, subtitle and then your text. And if you want it above the action bar, uh, you can do that as well. And I will show you those now in Minecraft. So let me just fly on over here. So first I'm going to set up everything. I'm setting this up. So I have uh, 40 ticks fade in, 40 ticks fade out, 70 ticks staying on the screen. I'm going to set that now. So that's now set. You only have to trigger that off once uh, in your world, and that will be pretty much, unless you want to change it for every single title you show, you don't have to. If I click this one, this is a main one. You can see the subtitle goes underneath it. I'll let those fade. And then you have above the action bar, and it says, I have it right now saying action. If you want something to stay on the screen despite the timer, you could always do that or supply with some sort of redstone. You see it's not going away no matter what I do. Alrighty. So I'll change that back, and then it should fade away. So yeah, those are three pretty much com most commonly used commands when it comes to interacting with players in your maps and yeah so I do not know what the next one will be uh, if you have any other suggestions or if there's anything you want me to explain further let me know uh, in the comments below uh, I'll read all your comments I'll try to answer back if you have any specific questions about these three commands um, I'll put the skeleton I'll call it uh, commands in the in the description so you can just kind of copy paste and play with them and yeah so I guess that's it for now I will see you guys all next time bye